Hello everyone and welcome to Control Systems in MATLAB Crash Course. This is the part one of the course. In this part we will introduce the Control Systems Toolbox. Moreover, we will explain the following. First of all, we will explain how to define transfer functions. Then, we will explain how to compute and plot step responses of transfer functions. Then, we will explain how to compute and plot impulse responses of transfer functions. Then, we will explain how to compute and plot responses to arbitrary signals. Then, we will explain how to compute poles and zeros and check stability. Then, we will explain how to generate the Nyquist plot. Then, we will explain how to generate the Bode plot. And finally, we will explain how to compute the phase and gain margins. A link to all the codes presented and developed in this video tutorial are provided in the description below this video. Okay, first, we explain how to define and implement transfer functions in MATLAB. But before we do that, let's write a general form of a transfer function. Here, for presentation clarity, I will write a general form of a transfer function of a third-order system. Usually, in control theory, we represent transfer functions like this. W is used as a symbol to denote transfer function, and S is a complex variable. And over here, I will write a general form of a third-order system. In the numerator, we have a polynomial that depends on S a3 is the first coefficient multiplying s to the power 3 then we have a2 multiplying s to the power 2 plus we have a1 multiplying s and plus we have coefficient a0 similarly in poly in the numer in the denominator we will have b3 multiplying s to the power 3 plus b2 multiplying s squared plus b1 multiplying s plus b0. To define and implement this transfer function in MATLAB, we will need to define two lists or two arrays grouping the coefficients in the numerator and in the denominator. Over here I will first do it symbolically and then I will type it in MATLAB. The list that groups all the coefficients in the numerator is denoted usually like this, num, and it's equal to a3, comma, a2, comma, a1, comma, a0. And similarly, we need to define a list grouping all the coefficients of the polynomial in the denominator. I will call this list or this array as then or D E N and it will be B three B two B one and B zero. Here it is. It's simple as that. Then we need to use the function called TF that's a MATLAB function for defining transfer function and we simply need to specify the polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. So we write tf and then the first argument will be num, that is the array grouping all the coefficients in the numerator, comma, then. And that's it. And this function will return a transfer function object. So let's do that in MATLAB. Okay, here for simplicity we need to specify coefficients, that is we need to specify their numerical values. So I will do it over here. First of all, I will do numerator and I will just pick random coefficients. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in the denominator, I will choose, for example, let's do something like this. 10, 1, 1.5, 0 0.5. Okay, let's now define a transfer function. So we need to type tf. And we just need to specify numerator and denominator. And this will return our w. Okay, so let's evaluate this and let's see the result. And here it is. You can clearly see the transfer function and the coefficients. So you can see 1, 1 over here, 2, 2 over here, 3, 
3 over here, 4 over here, 10, 1, 1.5, 0 0.5. And that's it. Simple as that. The transfer function I just defined might not be stable. However, for the SQL, I need a stable transfer function. I know that for second order system, a transfer function is stable if and only if the coefficients of the polynomial in the denominator have positive values. So let's define such a transfer function for the SQL. Here's my W of S and it will be equal to, let's say in the denominator we have this polynomial S squared plus 5S plus 10. And in the numerator, I have this polynomial, 2s squared plus 2s plus 15. Let's define this transfer function in MATLAB. First of all, let's define the coefficients in the numerator. The coefficients in the numerator are 2, 2, 15. Consequently, let's write 2, 2, 15. The coefficients in the denominator are 1, 5 and 10. So I need to write 1, 5 and 10. Let's define this transfer function. I need to type w is equal to tf and I need to specify numerator comma denominator. Here it is. And here's our transfer function. Let's verify it. 2s squared plus 2s plus 15. That's exactly what's written over here. In the denominator I have s squared plus 5s plus 10. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to compute step and impulse response of this transfer function. Step response is super easy. We just need to type step and we need to specify our transfer function object. Here it is. And if you execute this line, you will see the step response. Okay, so here is the step response. Now, how can we verify the accuracy of this step response? Well, over here you can see that basically the DC gain, that is the steady state value of the step response is approximately over here 1.5. Now, is this correct? Well, it is. If you use the finite value theorem, you will say the DC gain is just 15 over 10 and that's precisely 1.5. Now, it's always good practice to type help of a function. So type help step to obtain more information about the step function that you just type. And over here, you can actually see that the step function returns y and t. y is the step response and t is the time vector. So consequently, over here, you can also type ys, comma, ts. And here, I don't want this auto completion. And over here, you can see the result. So let's do that and let's, let's plot the output. Aha, uh -huh. and you can see ys and you can see the time s. And then manually, you can just plot by yourself the step response once, once you receive or retrieve these values. And here it is. Here you need to be patient and you just need to see the graph. Here it is. Next, let's learn how to compute the impulse response. To compute the impulse response, you need to use the function impulse and you just need to specify your transfer function. And you need to wait a little bit to see the impulse response. Here it is. Here is the impulse response of our system. Okay, you can also retrieve the values of the generated signals. First of all, type help impulse. And you can see over here that the impulse response function can also return the values of y impulse and time used to generate the response. So you can simply type y, i, and ti to get the results. And you can get these two vectors and you can play with them later on. Okay, so far we learned how to generate step and impulse responses. However, step and impulse functions are specific signals. In practice, 
you would like to see the system response to arbitrary signal. Consequently, let's learn how to compute the system response to user-defined signal. To do that, first we need to define time vector. And over here, I will assume that time starts from zero with a step of 0 0.01 and n will be, for example, 10 seconds. Then I need to define my input. I will call input, input u, and I will simply assume an arbitrary function. I will assume a trigonometric function. So it will be 2 times sine, 3 times time vector. This is basically a function that's 2 times sine 3t plus, or I will put minus, 1 multiplying cosine of 4 times time vector. Okay, that's it. To compute the system response to this defined input, we will need to use the function lsim. The first argument of lsim is our system, the second argument is input u, and the third argument is time vector. Let's evaluate this and let's see the response. And here it is. We actually have two signals. What are these signals? First of all, let's insert a legend. And legend tells us that the blue signal over here is actually our transfer function. However, what is this gray signal? Well, you can simply click on the gray signal and you will get this box saying that this is input. So the gray signal is input and the blue signal is actually the response. Now, in older versions of MATLAB, you will just see the blue line. That is, you will see the response. However, in the newer version of MATLAB, you will see both input and output. Over here, it's implicitly assumed that the initial state for simulation is equal to zero. However, you can also specify the initial state or the initial condition for simulation. Let's type help lsim to obtain more information. And over here, you will see that you can also specify x0. So let's modify this simulation to specify x0. x0 will be initial state. Since this is the second order system, we will need to have two initial states. Over here, for x1, I will assume 1, and for x2, minus 2. And here, you can simply add an additional argument, x0. Let's simulate this system, and let's see its response now. And here it is. Here's the simulation for a given initial state. Now, similarly to previous two functions, lsim can return the values. That is, it can return the simulated output and the time. So let's say ys and ts, and let's see the output. And here it is. It will return ys, and it will return ts. So then you can simply plot it, plot ts and ys. And here it is. Here's the simulated impulse response. Next, let's learn how to compute poles, zeros, and to check the stability. To compute the poles, we simply need to use the function pole and we specify w. And you can see the poles. Obviously, you can see that the system is stable since all the poles are strictly in the left half of the complex plane. To compute the zero of this function, we will simply specify or use the function zero, w, and let's see the zeros. Here are the zeros. Uh -huh. We can see that the zeros are also complex. And to check the stability, we can simply use the function is stable. And then you need to specify w. And it is stable. Another interesting function is the pzk. And if you do pzk, you will, or actually zpk, correction, the function is zpk, this function will give you zero pole gain form of your transfer function, that is, it will factor everything, such as you can see nicely continuous time zero pole gain model. 
Next, let's learn how to generate Nyquist and Bode plots of this transfer function. Let's start with Nyquist. To generate the Nyquist plot, you simply need to use the, trans the function Nyquist and let's evaluate this function. Now you have to wait a little bit and here is the Nyquist plot. If you click anywhere, you will get more information such as the system, real and imaginary parts. Then you have on tools, you can obtain, you can rotate, you can do everything else. However, we are not going to play with this graph. Next, let's learn how to generate a body plot. Okay, to generate a body plot, we will simply use the, the function body w. And let's generate the body plot. And here is the body plot. You can also add the grid over here. And let's see the result. And here it is. And finally, let us learn how to compute the gain and phase margin of our transfer function. The easiest way to do that and to see it graphically is to use the function margin and you need to specify your w. That is your transfer function. And if you evaluate this, you will see that the gain margin is infinity and the phase margin is minus 133 degrees. Another way to get the phase and gain margin is to use body plot. So type body of w and if you evaluate this you will have the body diagram. Now if you do the right click over here and if you click on characteristics you will see minimum stability margins and all stability margin. So select minimum stability margin and select all stability margins. And now over here, if you click, you will see that the phase margin is given over here, delay margin, and it's at this frequency. Similarly, you can see over here another phase margin and delay margin. On the other hand, if you would like to get numerical values of gain and phase margin, you will use the margin function. You will specify the transfer function and this margin function should return you the corresponding values. Let's denote the gain margin by gm, phase margin by pm, then let's get these frequencies and let's evaluate this and let's see the response. Here they are. We can see that the gain margin is in infinite, the phase margin is here, this is infinity and the frequency at which the phase margin is given is given over here. Okay, that's all for today.